What's up guys, Chris over here at the I-80 Boys bringing you another week four betting prediction video here. Look, uh, last week, rough week um, for college football. Uh, I apologize, I went 11-14. and 14. Um, Thankfully, I hit a couple money line parlays at the end of the night, uh, Central Florida being one of them, and uh, Colorado. Uh, so I did finish in the positive just barely. But uh, yeah, rough week, man. Every video that I put out um, didn't do so well. I think I went one on five on the channel. So if you tailed me, which I'm sure you didn't, uh, you probably lost some money. I apologize for that. But uh, NFL, by the way, I killed it. I went 16 and three on Sunday, won a shit ton of money. So I'm happy with that. But uh, we're talking college football today. We're talking Utah at Oklahoma State. Big 12 game here today. And uh Look, the way I look at this, man, this should be a really good game. It should be. I mean, a lot of people had Oklahoma State as a dark horse to win the Big 12 this year, me included. Um, I'm very high on Utah, obviously. They were my favorite to win it. But we'll get into it here, and uh, I think I'll talk about Oklahoma first. Now, I, I or excuse me, Oklahoma State first. Uh, we know they're 3-0, right? Uh, the, the win against South Dakota, they beat Arkansas in that shootout, probably had no business coming back and winning that game. That was an ugly game. I kind of thought Arkansas lost that more than Oklahoma State won that. Regardless, though, hats off, Oklahoma State won that game 39-31. to uh, they beat Tulsa last week, 41 to 10. Now I didn't get to catch much of that game. Um, I did see it on the ticker quite a bit. It looked like Oklahoma State's offense was just way too much for Tulsa. As far as the offense goes, though, man, Alan Bowman, we, this guy, I don't know what to think of this dude. And I know his stats are super impressive here, 75 of 112. He's thrown it 112 times. That's crazy. Uh, he's got 967 yards, eight touchdowns, two interceptions. Stat line is amazing. It is. I mean, it, it is really, really, really good. Um, I think he's a little erratic at times, though. Um, but, man, once he if he's dialed in and locked in, man, the kid can go off. And uh, he's gone off a couple times this year. That's why the stats are that impressive. Uh, next, Ollie Gordon, uh, one of my favorite running backs in the country. Could be the best back in the country, to be completely honest with you. Um, he's got 62 carries, 216 yards, four touchdowns. His yards per carry isn't that impressive, and I think teams, kind of what they're doing against Oklahoma State is like crowd the box, and they're going to try to stop him, which I totally understand. Um, I just hope Oklahoma State doesn't run him into the ground. That's a lot of carries so far this year at 62. As far as the receivers go, they got two really good ones, Stribling and uh, the Presley kid. They got 40 catches between them, 467 yards, and five touchdowns. These two light it up, um, and, and they're a pretty good one-two combo out there. Another thing with Oklahoma State's offense, man, you know they're averaging 42.7 points per game. That's a lot of points, uh, fairly impressive. Uh, here's the thing, though, the defensive side of the ball, right? Uh, not very good this year. Um, actually, I'm a little shocked it's as bad as it is. And they really haven't played any world beaters yet. This will be the first test um, against a really, really good Utah defense. Uh, as far as that defense goes for Oklahoma State, man, uh, allowing 462 yards per game. That's 124th in the country. There's only 134 teams. So uh, they're going to have to improve here and play a little bit better this weekend. I can tell you that. They're also allowing, and that's the problem here, they're allowing 300 yards or more through the air. Uh Damn, dude, and and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying that's all the, the, the secondary's fault. you got to be able to get a pressure and stuff like that on the QB. Otherwise, if you, you know, you give somebody like Cam Rising all day, um, he, he'll eventually pick you apart. And Cam Rising's not even like an elite-level thrower of the football. And that brings me into my next point, is Cam Rising playing? From my understanding, I found out last night that he is going to play in this game, which is huge for Utah. And I want to talk about Utah for a second. Uh, you know, here's the deal. Utah 3-0 as well. They beat Southern Utah 49-0 week one. Uh, that's a trash can team. They beat Baylor 23-12. to um, That was the game that Cam Rising got hurt in. They were up really big early in that game. And then once he got hurt, um, Baylor kind of crept back into that one. I still don't think Baylor's that good of a football team regardless. So they beat Utah State last week 38-21. to That was kind of a close game for, for a half. Um, the, the kid they had at quarterback and, uh, what the hell was his name? Was it Isaac Wilson that came in? He played okay, man. You didn't play terrible. 20 of 33 here, 239 yards, three touchdowns. Um, so he's not bad. He's capable as a backup. Um, is it Makai Bernard, the running back? He looked really good, had a really good game. 17 carries for 123 yards last week and a touchdown. 
Uh, as far as the receivers go, you know, the, the Dorian Singer, we, we know he transferred over. He, he's pretty good. They got like a, I call it a receiver by committee type of thing here. Um, Dijon Stanley, he's one of the running backs, is actually their leading pass catcher as far as catches go. Um, they got Brant Cluthy, the, the, the all-world tight end. He's a solid tight end as well. You got Money Parks and then Singer, obviously. So they all got over like 100 yards uh, total. So I, I think it's more of a receiver by committee type of thing, which is fine. Uh, you can't just key in on one dude if you're Oklahoma State. Now, the thing that I love about Utah, why I took them to win the Big 12 this year, them and K-State, basically, is because of the defense. I love Kyle Whittingham, um style of defenses. They're physical. They play hard. Um, they're very, very uh, disciplined. And it's, and it's been pretty damn good this year. It really has. They're 11th in the country in points given up per game, top 50 in yards on the ground given up per game. Um, their, their pass defense and their secondary is pretty elite. They're top 25 in yards um, through the air per game, uh, which will be key in this one because we know Oklahoma State likes to throw it, and they like to go fast pace. Um, it'll be interesting how this how this pans out as far as the Utah defense goes. And then also one thing I love about Utah, they get to the quarterback. They got 10 sacks on the year, which isn't bad. They're up there in the top 20 or top 15, I believe, in that as far as three games go. So, by the way, as I talk about both these teams, Take it with a grain of salt. There's only been three games played for each of these teams. We're, we're at a very small sample size here as far as the season goes. So I don't put a ton into these stats because some of these teams really haven't played anybody either. This should be a big game. This should be a pretty good game uh, considering the fact it's at Oklahoma State as well. So that's a huge advantage there. Now, how I'm going to bet this. I thought about this quite a bit actually. Talked about it a little bit yesterday. As you can see, I think Utah was like a three-point favorite when this thing closed, or excuse me, not closed, opened um, a couple days ago. As you can see, this is starting to shift, and I think this might become a pick 'em. I'm leaning Utah money line here. That's what I'm waiting for. I haven't bet it yet, and I probably will. I'm going to watch the line today here and there, see what happens here, but I am almost 100% certain Cam Rising is playing. Um, he hurt his hand. It's his non-throwing hand in that Baylor game. And I don't think they needed him last week against Utah State or whoever. I think they're kind of saving him up for this game because this is a huge conference game as far as both these teams go. So I think he's going to play, which I think is a huge advantage for Utah. I know a lot of people are on Oklahoma State. I get it. Um, the sharp play probably we would have been taking Oklahoma State in the points here. They are at home. I get it. Stillwater's a tough place to play. That crowd will be rocking. But I'm going to take Utah in the money line here. I'm not going to try to take a point and a half or two points or whatever it may be, depending on where this line closes at before the game. Uh, as far as the over-under goes, I, th that's a tough one, man. I, I I do think Utah's defense is really good. I think they're going to slow down Oklahoma State. But Oklahoma State, like I mentioned, has two really good receivers. Ollie Gordon, I don't even need to talk about him. We know how productive he's been in his career there at Oklahoma State. So I'm probably going to stay away from the, the over-under. But yeah, give me mo uh, the money line with Utah here. Let's make some money.